In the early days of wooden sailing ships, side boys were used to raise and lower the platform that dignitaries and officers rode as they boarded or departed the ship. Today, we still use side boys to render a last salute of respect to the departing retiree. The boatswain's call, which we refer to today as the boatswain's pipe, has been used for centuries as a means of passing the order to the crew above the roar of the winds and seas. Boatswains would also pipe these calls in order to render <laughs> honors to officers and visiting dignitaries, a tradition still followed in the U.S. Navy today. Picture in your mind, a ship sails gracefully and silently into harbor. The anchor is set. The sails are furled. The crew prepares the ship for a ceremony and ships to dress uniforms. At the appointed hour, the words are passed. All hands on deck, side boys, stand by to hoist away. Boatswain, stand by the call. The time has come for another sailor to retire. When the ship was made ready and the crew assembled, the retiree was brought front and center. Tales of voyages made, storms weathered, battles fought, friends known, ports visited, and liberties taken were remembered and retold the final time. Gifts of swords, pistols, or a sea chest to preserve the retirees' uniforms were presented. Finally, it was time to transfer the member ashore. The retiree would step to the platform, and as the side boys lowered him to the waiting boat, the bosun blew a final call. Today, gone are the sails, the platforms, and the longboats. Seldom all hands are called on deck, yet the bosun and the side boys remain. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Defense Information School Color Guard, singing of the National Anthem, and the invocation of Mr. Brian Boone, Lieutenant Commander, United States Navy, retired. Side boys, post. Presenting our official party, Captain, United States Navy, arriving. <laughs> Lieutenant, United States Navy, arriving. Color guard, post the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the National Anthem. <coughs> Oh, say does that. 
Sideboards, post. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as Mr. Boone offers the invocation. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace, which is fresh and new every single day. We thank you for the opportunity to come here together to celebrate the years of faithful service of Craig and Kim. And right now we just take a moment and especially pray for them and lift them up. You told us through your son, Jesus Christ, not to worry or not to have anxiety, but to seek the kingdom first. So I pray that they'll do that right now. They'll just lay aside every weight and every anxiety that's on them now with this busy day. And they'll just relax. And they'll know that you sent your son to bring us back into fellowship with you so we can have fellowship with one another. And that this day ultimately is about the fellowship that we have with each other as a family celebrating what Craig and Kim have done together. So I ask for us to just relax, enjoy the day, and enjoy you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the Dimples Color Guard and Mr. Boone for contributing to today's celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the many special guests who are in attendance with us today. It's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Kimberly Carlton, Lieutenant Carlton's wife, and their children, Joshua, Ebony, and Lauren. Joshua is a forward deployed Marine and is represented by his wife, Sarah. Also, his parents and grandmothers. I would also like to thank Colonel Bernard Kelsch, Director of Defense and Media Activity, for his attendance today. Finally, we extend a very special welcome to all our other distinguished guests, colleagues, family, and friends of Lieutenant Carlton. We are pleased to have you share this special occasion with them. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I present Lieutenant Carlton to present this special guest. I don't have any glory and words for him, and I have a lot of thrilling in the speech. So without further ado, Reverend Charles Tobley. <laughs> Before I start, I just want to give credit to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's ahead of my life. I just want to um, tell him thank you for having me here today. Um, when he gave me the call, I was like, you sure you want me? <laughs> you want me there? I understand we've been friends for a long time, but, um, the, but what you've asked me to do is something very, very, very important. And I feel that I'm important to him as he is to me. But sometimes, you know, we think little of ourselves, less of ourselves than we should. But I'm going to move on. I'm going to, I want to start today by just encouraging my friend Craig as it relates to 
this point in the journey. Because many people, when you retire, they think it's the ending of life. They think it's um, life, you know, has it stopped, or it's um, it's the ending of the life as we know it. But I come to encourage him today to, to let him know this is just another chapter. This is just a chapter in which he's been trying to get to a long time. This is a, another chapter in which uh, many have walked his shoes and have shown him how to walk in this particular chapter. Um, I'd like to encourage him to let him know that always take these three things with him. We know that if anyone knows Craig, you know he's a spiritual person. And he must always take scripture with him. And the scriptures that I would like for him to, to keep in mind, and these are not all inclusive, because if you know one thing about the word of God, you know that we all must read it in its entirety and follow it to the letter. But what I want to tell him to do is to take these two scriptures and stay with it and, and keep with it. Um, the first one is Proverbs 18 and 24. And as we can see by the people in this room, he's already following that. He's already um, shown himself friendly. He's already shown himself to be true. And I can tell you in my own life, he's more than a brother to me. Some people have a problem of saying, oh, step brother and step this. I say blend it. Because when you blend something together, you can't unblend something. Because when you put something together, you can't unput it. So if you say step, you might step on me. You might do something to me. But if I say you're my blended family, and Craig, and Kim, and my niece, and my nephew, who's deployed, they're very, very important to me. And what I want him to know today is, if he continues to show himself friendly according to the word, if he continues to be the man that God has called him to be, no matter where he is, no matter what he's doing, and no matter what he's saying, he'll always be okay. It may not feel good, it may not seem good, it may not even look good at the time, it may even make you cry, but God works all things together for our good. And if he continues to be friendly, if he continues to be a friend, then he'll be okay. The next thing I would like to encourage him to do is always keep the faith. Always keep the faith. Because if he keeps the faith, then God will move mountains forward. Then God will take care of those situations that he needs. Then God will take care of his family as he's done all these years. In the military, out of the military, whatever has come up, the Lord has taken care of him. And so if he remains faithful, and if he remains friendly, then God will take care of the rest. And the next thing I would like to tell him is to always be fruitful. Being fruitful does not just involve uh, one person that you meet along the way or always coming, uh, beating the person of the scripture. But uh, uh, being fruitful is leading by example. And when we lead by example, we know that there's someone looking at us that would, life would be changed. And if you change just one person's life along the way, you did a lot. Because that person can change another person's life. That person can change one other person's life. And if they do that, then life will be just a little better. It won't be easy all the time. It won't be, uh, uh, as my grandma would say back in the day, fly the ass and ease. And you're like, oh my God, what is that? That means it won't be easy and it won't be like hot and it won't be easy to walk on. But God will make it a little bit better. And you keep saying, oh my God, he's just talking about God, talking about God. The reason why I'm doing that is because I know him. The reason why I'm talking about God is because I have a relationship with him. And that's how Craig and I met. And I just believe that if he keeps those three things in mind, that he'll be okay. Always remember to be faithful. Always remember to be a friend. And always remember to be fruitful. And if he does that, he'll be okay. I'd just like to tell a story, um, if you so will, about Craig and I. Craig and I met um, in Florida. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, originally, born and raised. Um, Craig was stationed there along with Miss Kim and the kids. And when we first met, we were on a deployment. Well, if you know anything about you know, going to church, some people call it religious, I don't call it that, but if you know anything about going to church, I was raised Pentecostal and so was he. 
But I was always raised, everything you take it to in prayer. You know, even if it's, you know, sometimes people think, oh, God, if he said something about prayer again, I probably would jump off the ship. So I would always tell Craig, <laughs> I would always tell him what, you know, what I, what was placed in my spirit for him. And sometimes he would receive it well, and sometimes he wouldn't. But you know what I noticed about my friend and what I love about him? It's his honesty. It's his integrity. It's his willingness. He's going to hold you accountable. He wants you to do the same for him. The reason why I'm telling you the story about the ship and what happened on the ship, we were, in, um, we were on the ship one time. And we were, I was in prayer, and I came and told Craig something I dreamed. And he said, I don't receive that. <laughs> <laughs> I told Craig, I said, brother, you receive it or not. It is what it is. Now, it happened. Does that make me that big person? No, it don't. It just make it just lets me know that we were that made me know that we were friends because he told me his true feelings. You know, he told me how he truly felt about the situation. He wanted me to know he just don't take anything. He just don't take as they say a wood and nickel. But he wanted me to come with him with scripture. He wanted me to let him know, okay, you dream that, but what does that have to do with the way I believe? What does that have to do with my faith? What does that have to do with anything that has to do with me at that particular time? And one thing led to another, and it came to pass. He became the um, he became over the church on the ship, and that's the dream that I had. And the reason why I think that he didn't really believe it is because he was transitioning to become an officer, becoming from going from enlisted to officer. I also came and told him that I told him to get ready. I said because. There's going to be a transition. I didn't say what it was. I wasn't trying to be deep, and I wasn't trying, but I told him, I just tell what's in my spirit. And I just want to let you know today that Craig has indeed been a true friend. Miss Kim has indeed been a true friend to my wife, and I love mother just like she's my own mother. You know, and I love, I love them because they're my true friends. I'm not going to be before you long, but before I be, um, <laughs> but before I, before I take my seat, I just want to um, I just want to say thank you again, Chris, and I just want to read a poem to you, and I wanted you to hold it dear. And it's called the Mighty Oak. Okay. And Craig. I know you're going to get me because I'm rustling through these papers. Okay, I found the book. The poem is The Mighty Oak by Catherine J. Parentor. Stand tall, O mighty oak, for all the world to see. Your strength and your undying beauty forever amaze me. Though storm clouds hover above you, your branches span the sky. In search of the radiant sunlight, you count on to survive. When the winds are high and restless, and you lose a limb or two, it only makes you stronger. We could learn so much from you. Though generations have come and gone and brought about such change, quietly you've watched them all, yet still remain the same. I only pray God gives me the strength he's given to you to face each day with hope, where the skies are black of you, blue. Life on earth is truly a gift. Every moment we must treasure. It's the simple things we take for granted that become our ultimate pleasure. Thank you for having me today, and thank you. Thank you for sharing with us, Mr. Coburn. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the presiding officer for today's ceremony. Captain Scott E. Knorr, Commanding Officer, Navy Public Affairs Support Element, Norfolk, Virginia. All right. So, I'm going to come over here. Everybody that's family right now, raise your hand, please. Look at this. This is great support. This is what it's all about. All the friends and shipmates, raise your hands. Look at this. This is what these days are about. This is our, what we call a great Navy day. But it's also a bittersweet Navy day. We lose a shipmate, we 
who was an officer, an outstanding officer, but we're happy for where you're going. Two decades of service, and then you're going to go ashore. So um, we're going to return them back to you a little bit, okay? But um, there's a couple things I just want to say. First, welcome friends, family, shipmates to Craig's retirement today. Um, truly an honor to preside over it, so thank you. Um, a few special guests, Colonel Kelsch, the Director of the Defense Media Activity, sir, thank you for being here. Uh, Master Chief Weatherspoon, the Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Defense Media Activity, and Sergeant Major Davio, uh, Sergeant Major for uh, Defense Media Operations, thank you all for being here too, I appreciate that. Uh, again, there's so much support, you'll see a lot of folks here in uniform. Um, Greg's made a big impact on all of us. Um, outstanding officer, outstanding leader. Um, Oh, one other one I missed, Kristen. Thank you for being here too. It's Craig's <laughs> boss. <laughs> so, all right, now let me start on this one. The Carlton family. Uh, this is why I wanted to kind of get away here. Uh, Craig's wife, 17 years, Kim. Um, thank you for your service and sacrifice. I got to tell you, he would not be where he is today without your love and support. <laughs> His son couldn't be here today, Sergeant Joshua Boozer. Uh, he's a Marine. He's deployed to Australia. Uh, he's out at Camp Pendleton. Uh, where's his wife, Sarah? There you are. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your service. So, uh, I got Ebony, the eldest daughter, studying to become a teacher in elementary education. I got to tell you, it's like the end of service. It's a higher calling. Thank you. You're giving it back. You're paying it forward. That's what life's about, okay? Um, <laughs> now let me get into the rock star here, Lauren. All right, senior in high school, and I got a long list of her. Involved in JROTC, Key Club, National Honor Society, high school tennis, the list keeps going on. Talk about, you're like your dad, you're an overachiever. This is exactly what it's about. Um, here's the best part. She wants to go to college and become a journalist. Yeah. Not quite career field, so good. I'm looking at the future in front of me here, so this is a good thing. Uh, and I've got uh, mom and dad, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Carlton. Where's Mr. Carlton? There he is. I saw him back there. And I got Mrs. Carlton here too. Uh, for Mrs. Carlton, uh, um, I got to tell you, thanks for raising such a great son. Um, I've worked with him for the last three years. Is it three years? <laughs> felt like a lot longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like five or six. Probably like dog years, I bet. Okay. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, thanks for loaning him to us for the last 20 years. Um, he is truly one of the finest naval officers I've really had the pleasure of serving with. I've been in a long time, but I got to tell you, uh, he's a class act. Okay? Um, and I got uh, the in laws here too. I got Bishop Ryan Hill and Miss Gloria. I met you guys earlier. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate your attendance. Uh, but welcome, everybody. Uh, 20 years ago, Craig started in uh, Marines. Uh, he did that for a while. I think you can see in the bio in the program, he's been around the block a little bit, um, a few times. Became a supply officer. We affectionately call him in the Navy a chop. You'll have to ask him why we call him that later. <laughs> so. But he's an outstanding chap, I got to tell you. Um, but he started his career from the ground up. So as an enlisted man and then becoming an officer, uh, that's what makes him such a good leader because he's walked in uh, the enlisted person's shoes. That's what truly makes him a leader. He's, he knows how to lead. Um, when he gives people that work for him instructions or orders, he truly understands what it means to do that, having been on the other side. So those type of officers in the Navy, we call them Mustangs. Uh, Mustangs are unbridled. They just get things done. They roll up their sleeves, they lead, they make things happen. Um, let me tell you a couple things about that. Um, I'm going to go over. I, I've got my little list. I sat down the other night writing down. If somebody were to come up to me and ask me, who is Lieutenant Carlton? I'm going to tell you. But first, this quote is going to start it off. Admiral Mike Mullins, he was a former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. You hear all kinds of Navy quotes and famous quotes, but his quote was real simple. It just said, everything you do in the Navy begins and ends with leadership. And that's, it's that simple, but it's that true. 241 years ago, 242 years ago to today. So 
Now let me start with Craig. I'll start with leadership. He leads by example. He always puts the sailors first. Professional, dedicated, he's the master of his job, master of his craft. He's passionate. He's intelligent. Now this one I think you all agree with me on. Infectious enthusiasm, always smiling, and has this, this, this infectious laugh. So I could hear him coming down the hall, probably 50, 60 feet away, and I'd hear him talking and laughing. I'm like, you're not so right. <laughs> so. Positive. With Craig, the glass is always half full. And that's important. Because as a leader, you set the example. The minute you start showing that you're Stressed. Everybody else around you starts stressing. It's, it, it goes down. Um, he's unflappable. And this goes back to the stress. The military is a very stressful environment. A lot of jobs are. The military has a lot of uncertainty. Things pop up out of nowhere. You have to figure them out. You have to solve them. Sometimes very, very quickly. You have to make decisions based upon the best information you have at that very moment. Greg's unflappable. He's calm. In that face of the storm, he's calm. He can reflect. He can just level it. That's what I'm looking for. That is a leader. He possesses strong values. Uh, the Navy's uh, core values, honor, courage, and commitment, he lives those each and every day. We have to. That's what sets us apart from the other 99%. But he also has strong personal values and beliefs. Greg, this is where you need to say thanks to your mom and dad. Thanks, mom and dad. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to be a good leader, you also have to be a good teacher, but you have to be a good mentor, too. Every day, you're training your relief. An advisor. An officer needs to be a good advisor. You have to be able to brief your chain of command, the upper leadership, as well as your peers, and as well as the people that work for you. But for me, he always gave me very sage advice. Whether I wanted it or not, I got it. That's what it's about. And in the military, we call it a bluff. So it's bottom line up front. We don't beat around the bush, good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter. Come and tell me what's going on. We can take it, we just need to know. Greg's like that, tells me like it is. An officer, good manners, punctilious courtesy. That's him. This is where you think your mom and dad. <laughs> think your mom and dad? Think your mom and dad. <laughs> A patriot. This is what it's all about. He loves and believes in his country, his navy, his command, and his shipmates. Craig believes what we believe, that America is not just a place in the world, it is truly the hope of the world. Now, as Admiral Mullen said, it starts and ends with leadership. So we end with leadership. As a leader, Craig brings out the best in everyone. He sees things in people that people don't see in themselves. That's rare. That's very rare. That is what it takes, all those traits, to be a 21st century naval officer. And this guy's got it. Finish this here. Now, I'm gonna finish with this here. Craig, you've had a remarkable career. We're very proud of all you've accomplished. We really are. Um, you wouldn't be here where you are without all these people right here. Uh, two decades. It's a lot of service. In this profession of arms, it's a long time. So, um, on behalf of the officers, the chiefs, um, and all the sailors, and most of the sailors here at the DMA, and throughout the rest of the Navy, thank you for a job well done. Um, it has been truly an honor and a pleasure to serve with you. Um, I'm not just going to call you a shipmate, I'm going to call you my friend. Okay? Um, Kim, I wish you two the very best in this next chapter. It's exciting. It's even more exciting when you get to an MPM. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, I just hit that. It's awesome. <laughs> and that's why I just want to tell you guys fair winds and, and thank you for everything. Okay. Thank you. Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Service Achievement Medal. Attention to award.
to Lieutenant Craig J. Carlton. Lieutenant Craig J. Carlton, United States Navy, distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious service as logistics officer, contract specialist, while assigned to DMA Fort Meade, Maryland, from October 2015 to September 2018. As support services logistics officer, he exhibited broad logistics expertise in effectively managing five critical supply systems, three warehouse locations, and accountability and oversight in excess of $1 million in material and supplies. He was specifically selected by the Chief Management Officer as a Tier 2 Objective Owner and used the Lean Six Sigma model of leadership to reduce process time, change organizational perception, and directly impact agency effectiveness, resulting in at least 500 saved man hours and zero fiscal and logistics discrepancies within the headquarters element. Later, as a contract specialist for acquisition and procurement, he utilized electronic buy and general services administration for small purchases, released necessary announcements on federal business opportunities, and led the preparation of documents in the awarding of $50 million in contracts. As the primary hand receipt holder for the directorate, he flawlessly managed the administration of 100,000 in property records, surpassing agency goals on administration and inventory requirements. The distinctive accomplishments of Lieutenant Carlton culminate a 20-year career in the service of his country to reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Navy, and the Department of Defense. Signed the 6th day of August, 2018, Bernard Kelsch, Colonel, United States Army, Director, DMA. Let's give him a round of applause. Please. <laughs> Sit down, everybody, please. Sorry about that. These things are hard to pen sometimes. I might just poke him. Is that all right, Kim? <laughs> Come on, get in there. <laughs> He's a very muscular chest, sir. <laughs> wow, this is hard, man. This is a uh, place to leave it. There we go. I think I got it. There we go. Turn that around. All right, got it on there. Finally. All right, dude. Well done. Attention orders, Department of the Navy, Special Order Number 1578. You are relieved from active duty, Defense Media Activity Fort Meade, Maryland, and retired effective December 1, 2018, in the grade of Lieutenant by order of the Secretary of the Navy. Your request to be transferred to the retired list was approved by the Secretary of the Navy, effective 01 December 2018. On 01 December 2018, you will be transferred to the retired list with the grade of Lieutenant and with retired pay of Lieutenant, pursuant to provisions of 10 U.S. Code, Section 632. Yeah. All right. And now we will present the retirement certificate. <coughs> certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America to all who shall see these presents greetings. This is to certify that Lieutenant Craig Carlton, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Navy on the first day of December 2018. Signed, Vice Admiral Robert Burke. United States Navy, Chief of Naval Personnel. All right. Now, to the family. Captain Nora will now present Miss Carlton with a certificate of appreciation from the United States. <laughs> Come on over here. <laughs> Let's come down. You got to get in the middle. Come on over here. Uh, All right. C certificate states Kimberly Carlton, your commitment to the Navy and your spouse's profession during his career has been a model for others to follow. For this, we are forever grateful with our deep appreciation, admiration, and respect. We present this certificate as a remembrance of your years as a member of both the Navy and Marine Corps family. Presentation of certificates of appreciation for the family. For the children, Joshua, Lauren, and Ebony, 
for Gloria and Brian Hill, Curtis and Carolyn Carlton, Kylie Mae Carlton, and Lulu Agnew. Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Navy. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. Today, after completing over 20 years of active Navy service, your family member has ended an honorable and faithful service to his country, and his efforts are sincerely appreciated. Such a rich and rewarding career reflects a strong commitment to the principles of freedom and democracy and the belief that they must be upheld at any cost. That type of total commitment is not possible without the full support of the entire family. Although you may have never had to carry out a military order or deploy in hostile waters, your loyalty and steadfast support of your family members' careers can rightly be viewed as service to your country. That loyalty and dedication were significant courses of strength for Lieutenant Carlton during arduous duty and exemplified the highest traditions of patriotism. On behalf of the Department of the Navy and the officers and crew of the Defense Media Activity, I extend to you sincere thanks and express our appreciation for a job well done. Given this 10th day of August 2018, Scott E. Moore, Captain, United States Navy. Come on up, All right, yeah. everybody whose name they call, get up here. All right, here you go. Three, everybody say, Go Navy, Beat Army.
I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is held a little higher. My colors are a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am saluted. I am respected. I am revered. I am loved. And I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Arden Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, Guam, Okinawa, Tarawa, Korea, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf, Operation Enduring Freedom, and scores of places long forgotten by all except those who were there with me. I was there. I led my sailors and marines. I followed them. I watched over them. They loved me. I was on a small hill on Iwo Jima. I was dirty battle-torn and tired, but my sailors and marines cheered me, and I was proud. I was at Ground Zero in New York City on September 11th as cowardly fanatics attacked America. I was raised from the ashes of once proud buildings by brave firefighters, heroes who risked their lives to save others, showing all that America, although bloody, will never be beaten. Those who would destroy me cannot win, for I am the symbol of freedom of one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is done by those whom I have served with in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the surly bonds of earth, and from my vantage point on the moon, I stand watch over the new frontiers of space. I have been the silent witness to all of America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I am torn into strips to be used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle, when I fly at half-mast to honor my sailors and marines, and when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the grave sight of her fallen son or daughter. I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wait, dear God. Long may I wait. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to invite your attention to the podium for a brief word and presentation by Ms. Ebony Carlton.
Thank you for sharing your, your mad dance skills. <laughs>
So much so that when we could no longer meet in the small shift chapel, we moved to the Folsom. When the growth presented a problem with that space, we crowded the mess decks. Well, uh, Reverend Tobin and I had no special strategy. Only this. Chuck had shared with me that although he could not consistently be present with me to lead the meetings, he would pray nightly for the gatherings, that God would anoint it, bless it, and cause it to grow. I agree with that, and I had no doubt that the version way in which our gatherings in large uh, part were some way proportional to my friend's powerful prayer life. However, I do recall one particular evening, early on, when I was a bit confused by the absences of a certain Bible study. Reverend Tobler had expressed to me that he would not be able to come that evening, but that he would be engaging in deep, abiding prayer back in the birthing area which is a place that all the male and listed personnel slept, you know, a spiritual warfare of sorts. <laughs> Besides, I thought, you know, and he, he said to me, he said I should join him after the study in prayer. I was more than eager to do this. Besides, I thought, how awesome would it be to experience firsthand the powerful prayer <coughs> that brought such growth to our ship's worship service? Well, after a night in which the attendance was extremely low for what I was used to, I made my way back to the birthing area and found an alarming sight and sound. The good Reverend Topler was indeed offering up a sound to heaven, but it did not appear to be the sound of worship, <laughs> praise, or prayer. No, family, perhaps somewhere in the history of time, the sound of snoring has been confused. <laughs> the sound of worship. But I highly doubt that that was the case in this instance. That's the Reverend Tobin's prayer posture. He seemed to be deeply engaged in the meditation of the back of his eyelids. <laughs> now, it could be very possible that the Lord was opening the eyes of his heart, but it became very clear to me that Chuck's physical eyes were remain shut. <laughs> Upon this observance, I remember saying to myself, so this is the reason why attendance was so low tonight. <laughs> I love and appreciate you, Chuck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all of my acquisition colleagues, past and present. Kristen, Rodney is here. I see you coming. I'm not here. I'm not. Keisha, Janelle, James, Shadon, Darren, Sharon, Nephew, Susie, Jesse, Claudio, and Siobhan. I honor the work and the dedication of all of the departments and components of the event. And though I will not be able to name all of the accomplishments and people who make this place go, I want to let you know that it is the perseverance, sense of service, and fortitude that you show that gives the service members the best support in all of them. My journey began back in 1994 on the Yellow Footprints, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, San Diego. The night the recruiter came to pick me up, I remember the uneasiness and nervousness in my own mind and heart, the sense of unbelief and bewilderment in my family's eyes that I was actually going to join the military and the unknown elements of what the future as a serviceman would hold. I remember deboarding the plane there in San Diego. Didn't know what was going to happen. I walked over to the, the machine to grab a bite to eat. My wife knows I'm very fond of Snickle bars. So I go to the machine, I put in my money, I grab a Snickle bar out of the machine, and immediately I hear a voice that says, drop the snicker right now! <laughs> At that particular point, I knew that my life would change forever. <laughs> they moved us out of the airport and onto the bus, and my military journey began. But it was a little bit before that. After graduating high school in 1993, that there were two trailblazers who are here today. Marvin, Rob, thanks for being here who blazed a path for me concerning the military. A little something to say about both. My cousin Rob, I'll talk about him first. Rob was a very interesting fellow before he joined the Marine Corps. <laughs> he won't want me to say this, but his hair was much longer. <laughs> and it was much redder. And so I never, ever considered that my cousin Rob would join the Marine Corps. But he did. After he joined me and my aunt Sylvia sitting over there, a couple other family members, we went to Rob's graduation. The first thing he said to me was, Craig, don't ever do this. 
<laughs> Step about ten times. But I was intrigued, and I asked him questions while we were at the graduation about what it's like to be a Marine, what his experiences were. He said, it's like I'm in a living hell. <laughs> I remember when I made the decision to go to boot camp, Rob called me from Marine Combat Training, and he said, Craig, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I said, Rob, I've decided to join. And since he could no longer withstand me from doing it, he said, well, fine. I'll tell you what you need to do to get by. So thanks, Rob. I wouldn't have made it through boot camp without the advice and the counsel and the wisdom that you gave me. Sitting next to him is the first one of us who went to the Marine Corps, Marvin. I remember I, was, I had gone through a breakup of sorts with the girl that was not really my girlfriend at the time. That's how I found out later on. <laughs> Marvin and I were talking to a steel station in, with the reserve component in Dauphine Street in New Orleans. And he told me, he said, Craig, you know, it's just like a regular job. He said, all you have to do after you make it through boot camp is come to your 9 to 5. <laughs> At first I told him, you have lost your mind. <laughs> but then as he began to talk with me more, I decided it might be a good thing if I joined the Marine Corps, especially since I knew I needed the discipline. And I knew I needed, needed someone to kind of guide me on the path with respect to my career. Marvin, thank you so much for blazing the trail. There are a lot of other things we did when we were teenagers that I won't mention today. <laughs> Fast forward to boot camp. Early 1995. During that time, I had quite a few struggles with making it through training. Um, I got set back in training. It's only supposed to last for three months. Mine lasted five. Um, and I remember, I used to get a lot of letters from my mom and other family members. But there was one particular letter that came through the book camp one day. And it was not, there was no postcard really, no, no return, no name on the address. When I opened the letter, I just saw one scripture. It said, Behold, I am with you always, mm -hmm. even until the end of the age. I recognize that as you're writing that. That scripture, which down in my shadow box, is what has kept me over the course of my career. I know that you and mom have not had an opportunity to really be involved as much as you'd like to, but the steady anchor of Jesus Christ that you show me in that scripture, that he would never leave, never forsake, has been what has kept me in all of my journey in the military. Thank you, Dad. I'm so grateful for retired one officer Brian being here today. I can remember on the USS Kear Sarge as we were stationed together. When we first met, she ignored me. <laughs> because I'm sure she thought that's just another young <coughs> officer who thinks he's the stuff. <laughs> I had to learn the way of warrant officers. It's a very different way. But over time, Sharon and I became friends. And along with um, Lieutenant Commander Cheek, who's not here today, we became like three peas in the pies in the Cure Sharks. Going to Liberty together, sharing stories, <laughs> laughing at every single thing that we could possibly see on the, on the ship. Thank you, Sharon, for being a mentor to me. I never really had a mentor within the supply corps. And you and Carol fill that role for me. And I'll be forever grateful. Thank you. To my son Josh, his wife Sarah, thank you for representing your husband today. Josh has been a delight to raise. It's been a joy to see him grow, to watch his maturation over the years, to see his basketball skills far surpass mine. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have raised someone who you now can claim as a life partner and friend in a campaign. Sarah, thank you for being a part of our family as well. I know that Joshua is not really sure about his Marine Corps career and how long he'll be in the Marine Corps, but I would encourage you, be by his side, love him, support him. He's gonna need it. Marine's life is hard. But thank you so much, Sarah, for being here to represent him today.
Ebony, I cannot believe you showed those videos. <laughs> My goofiness, sense of humor, and lackadaisical style. You in our home are the one who has the most faith. The way you believe in the Lord against all odds has been an encouragement to me and your mother. Continue to press on. Strive after Christ with all of your heart, all of your might, all of your strength. What you do as a career does not define you. You are welcome to stay in our home for as long as you can. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for honoring me today. Lauren J. Sitting in the back. She is my witty, intelligent, yes, probably 17 going on 37 daughter. I'm so grateful for your drive, your passion, mm -hmm. your intellect, your beauty, and everything you bring to the table. Always remember that everything that God has made you, the culture he has placed you in, the family he's placed you in, is all by his doing and by his design. Don't ever apologize for it. Don't ever make any excuses for it. And I want you as well to continue to strive after the Lord with all of your might. Do it because of what your mom and I have taught you, and in spite of what we've shown you at the same time. We know that we are perfect parents, but we have raised a wonderful daughter. I love you, Mark. I will try through these next remarks to keep a dry face. Kimmy, you've been with me the whole time. When we met, I knew you were slightly attracted to me. <laughs> I was poetic earlier on in our marriage. I think I still am. I'm trying to regain it. <laughs> but I want to read to you a poem that I wrote this time ago. The bane of my existence is rocked to its core. The world's relentless gift of pain and turmoil seems obviously apparent. Life, having been sometimes a great ally and at other times a pesky adversary, has worn me ragged with failed dreams and empty promises. Despite small glitters of sunshine here and there, pictures of pouring rain and form of sorrow consume the space between agony and joy. Just then, the arrival. A stream of pleasure infiltrated my atmosphere, shook the foundation of my self-awareness. While delightfully observing the contrast created by our differences, experience provided the music of our dance to compatibility. <coughs> a smile with as much warmth as the sun eyes that were as deep and breathtaking as a brain came, and the expression of love that reached high above the mountains. And then it was clear, the true meaning of what had been finally revealed in her, not in the whole, but in part, the elusive part, the element in which the Creator spoke when he declared the inadequacy of man's loneliness. Though unexpected, it was joyfully received. My love, my queen, my gift, 
by dream. The life. The arrival. I want you to pray. From former President Jimmy Carter, who applied for service in the nuclear program under Admiral Rickover. This is his account of his interview with Admiral Rickover. He says, I had applied for the nuclear submarine program, and Admiral Rickover was interviewing me for the job. It was the first time I met Admiral Rickover, and we sat in a large room by ourselves for more than two hours. And he let me choose any subjects I wish to discuss. Very carefully, I chose those about which I knew most of the time. Current events, seamanship, music, literature, naval tactics, electronics, gunnery. And he began to ask me a series of questions of increasing difficulty. In each instance, he soon proved that I knew relatively little about the subject I had chosen. <laughs> <laughs> We've experienced that having me, continually. He always looked right into my eyes, and he never smiled. I was saturated with cold sweat. Finally, he asked a question, and I thought I could redeem myself. He said, how did you stand in your class at the Naval Academy? Since I had completed my sophomore year at Georgia Tech before entering Annapolis as a plea, I had done very well. And I swelled my chest with pride and answered, Sir, I stood 59th in a class of 820. I sat back to wait for the congratulations which never came. <laughs> Instead, the question, and this is a question I ask all of you who will continue your careers, whether in the military or not. Did you do your best? I started to say, yes, sir. But I remembered who this was and recalled several of the many times at the academy when I could have learned more about our allies, our enemies, weapons, strategy, and so forth. <coughs> I was just human. I finally gulped and said, no, sir, I didn't always do my best. He looked at me for a long time and then turned his chair around to end the interview. He asked me one final question, which I've never been able to forget or to answer. He said, why not? I sat there for a while shaking and then slowly left the room. My question to you, will you do your best? Perhaps a better question is, when you have not done your best, will you continue? Life offers so many challenges, so many difficulties, so many storms, so many trials. There is one thing that will keep you grounded. That is Jesus Christ and Him alone. When you have not done your best, understand that He did His best when He died on Calvary's cross, stretched out His arms for fallen world, and said, I love you. This ceremony, all of you that are here, is all about the glory of God. I want to leave you with something. This is straight from my heart. <coughs> This has been my testimony, and it is something that I hope to do as I continue my journey. <clears throat> Just to let me live my life, and let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary, yeah. with his love he has saved me, by his power he has raised me, yeah. Yeah. to God.
Navy family, departing. This concludes the official portion of the ceremony. On behalf of the Defense Media Activity, we wish Lieutenant Carlton and his family the very best as they begin a new chapter in their lives. On behalf of Lieutenant Carlton, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Please join us in congratulating him and his family in the receiving line of the atrium. 